Today on Schmindian, we are making a dish that is multinational, simple yet complex, and has its roots all the way back in the Roman Empire. I'm talking about Kheer, aka Indian rice pudding. Let's make it. Welcome to Schmindian, I'm your host Paul Singh, and this is Indian Food Demystified, aka Indian Food for Schmucks. Today we are talking about the effortlessly unpretentious, spiritually significant, and sneakily addictive dessert here. Rice pudding. It's rice pudding. It's Indian rice pudding. It is rice pudding, but man, it is so good. I actually find myself thinking about this at weird times. Like when I'm sitting in the car at a red light or something like that, Kier will pop into my mind. I'll think about it. I'll think, oh God, I want some Kier, but I can't. I got things to do. But that is the seductive nature of Kier. Once you try it, you will crave it forever. Did you know that the Roman Empire had rice pudding? We'll get back to that in a second, but the history of Kier is so interesting because rice pudding is found in every country all over the world in different cultures. The Middle East has their own rice pudding. So does China and the Asian countries. The Europeans have their own kind of rice pudding, as do the Americas. So, I mean, the people have spoken. Everyone likes rice pudding. Not just us mere mortals, also the gods like rice pudding. Hindu gods specifically. In India, at religious ceremonies, Sikh, Hindu ceremonies. I don't know about Muslims though, but definitely Sikh and Hindu. Uh, at the end of a lot of religious ceremonies, they serve something called prashad. Prashad is an offering of food that is first offered to God and then given to the worshipers. So you go to church and then there is an offering of prashad made to God. And then at the end of the ceremony, the worshipers all eat the prashad. So it's handed out to the worshipers. Uh, so you offer it to God. God's like, cool, you guys can have it. Then you guys can have it. But yeah, it's like a little thank you for coming to church from you know God himself, herself themselves, itself, whatever God you worship, that person. <sighs> Got through that cleanly. So not only do Hindu gods love kheer, but also ancient Romans love kheer. As I mentioned before, the ancient Romans had a version of rice pudding called patina versatilis. And that recipe was written down in one of the world's oldest cookbooks called the Apicius Cookbook. I actually don't think it's called the Apicius Cookbook. I think it's called just Apicius. And that was written down between the 4th and 5th centuries, so, you know, super old recipe. So maybe it was the Romans who spread it all over the world, in between all of the raping, murdering, and pillaging. They said, here, have some cure. Spread that around too. A round of applause for our ingredients. We've got jaggery, basmati rice, ghee, whole milk, 10% cream, 6 cardamom pods, some rum, almonds, and raisins. The first thing we have to do is create a syrup out of jaggery. We're using jaggery because jaggery is more authentic and way more hipster than sugar. It's kind of hard though, but I'm going to wrap them in a paper towel and then put them in the microwave to soften them a little bit so they're easier to cut. I'm going to put them in for 15 seconds. You don't want to melt them because when they melt, they will harden and turn into like a really tough caramel, which is hard to get off the plate. So don't do that. Get a cutting board and a sturdy knife. It's going to be tough. Frying pan, about medium heat, half cup of water, and everybody in. The jaggery is going to melt, but just crush the chunks with your spoon while it's melting. We're going to strain the syrup into a mug and then just keep it aside and put it into the rice pudding at the very end. This is my mom's recipe. She told me that in India, when she was growing up, there was three grades of rice. There was the most expensive grade, which had fully intact grains of rice like this. Then they had the second grade, which was partially broken. Then they had the cheapest grade, which was all broken rice. They used to make kheer out of the cheapest rice, the fully broken rice, because it gave it a creamy quality to it. I don't know where to buy fully broken rice, so we're gonna have to break our own if you wanna make this full hipster style, full authentic style. So I'm gonna put half of our rice into the food processor and pummel it. So then our rice will be half fully intact rice, half broken rice. That creates multiple textures, which I like in my food. I like different kinds of textures. So. And this rice is really hard, so you gotta pummel the crap out of it, so. That was like 45 seconds of pummeling. Oh, they're broken. We're gonna wash the rice three times in cold water, so just put them in a bowl, wash them in cold water, and drain the liquid. Do that three times. 
While we've got the food processor out, we're gonna put our almonds in. That was eight pulses. And this goes back in line. Grab a deep pot. In goes the ghee, about medium heat. Move that around. We're gonna toast the rice in the ghee for about 30 seconds or so. Pour in the milk. You have to scrape the bottom right after you pour the milk in. And the 10% cream. Depending on how high the heat is, this could take between 30 minutes and an hour of a low boil. It's a low, it's between a low boil and a simmer. I will say that. While this is going on, every couple minutes, you have to stir it to make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom. So a good strategy when making kheer is to make something else while you're making kheer. So you can make your dinner and also have this on one of the other burners on the stove. And you know, while you're making dinner, just kind of look over, give it a stir, you know? And so two things get done at once. So it's like delicious multitasking. I'm still working on the branding for that. I might change it. Diversified deliciousness. Ooh, I like that. I like the alliteration. Diversified deliciousness. That's what this is. This is also a good time to add the rum to the raisins. So if you don't want to cook something else while this is happening, I mean, you can just stand here and stare at it. And the milk stares back at you and it asks you questions. Like, what are we even doing here? What is all this? Are aliens real? If they are real, are they cool? I suspect aliens are cool because they stay hidden. You know, they don't want attention, which I like. I like people and creatures that don't like attention. The humility intoxicates me. Now is a good time to add the green cardamom, mortar and pestle. I love using a mortar and pestle because I feel like a wizard when I'm using it. Dump in your green cardamom pods. Give them a gentle smashing just to open up the pods. Now that the seeds are out, you want to give it a couple of smashes and then some vigorous circles like this. Okay. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Okay. Just going to give it a little taste to see if the rice is done. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely done. Now is a good time to add the jaggery syrup. There you go. If you don't feel like making the jaggery syrup, that's completely understandable. Just at this point, put in about a half cup of sugar. So, by the way, you can get jaggery at Indian grocery stores or just order them on Amazon. Stir that in. Now I'm going to transfer this into a casserole dish. This is how you would serve it at a party or for a group. Now for the drunk raisins. For an individual, we'll put it one of these. Last is the pummeled almonds. These are an ingredient, but they're also a garnish, so we're going to sprinkle these on top. All right, let's give it a try. Ah, oh, it's really good. It's really good. Strangely, it's simple but complex. And the, the multiple textures work so well together. The different grains of rice with the almonds, with the raisins. Oh, it's really nice. One more, one more, one more. The Romans were onto something. So were the Indians. But don't just take my word for it. Let's see what my dad thinks. Dad. Yeah. How do you feel about Kier? I like it. Where does it rank in the list of desserts that you like? Oh, maybe four. Three, four? Three? Four. Three? Yeah. What's better than Kier? Oh, always sweets. Like <laughs> <laughs> Barfi? Yeah, that would be number one. Okay, what else? What's number two? Uh, Rasgulla. Rasgulla is good. <laughs> and third will be Kier. What about Rasmalai? I like Rasmalai. Ras oh yeah, Rasmalai. Same thing, Rasmalai, Rasgulla, more of Rasmalai. You want to eat that very badly. I want to eat it badly right now. All right, try it. I can't wait. Okay, go ahead. Let me try this one here. Mmm, good. I think it's pretty good, but I would have a little bit less sugar. Percentage-wise, how much sugar should be taken away? 10, 15 percent less. Well, that's not much. No, but some people like more sugar, so it's good. Okay. Pretty good. Good proportion, like a milk and the rice. Good. That's it. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Have a good day.